We're on the cusp of an AI revolution when it comes to the field of robotics. And Jim Fan from NVIDIA just laid out intelligent agents and how they're scaling those across different disciplines. Let's jump in and take a look. This is a practitioner's guide towards generally capable AI agents. Most of the ongoing research efforts can be laid out nicely across three axes. The number of skills an agent can do, the body forms or embodiments it can control, and the realities it can master. Our goal is somewhere here, but the upper right corner is where we need to go. So let if everybody remembers, AlphaGo was a project in which the team that ended up forming DeepMind over at Google built an AI agent that was able to beat the best Go championship players in the world. This is a pivotal moment for AI, an even bigger deal than when IBM's Deep Blue beat the first world champion at chess. And it ushered in this idea that we might soon have intelligent machines. But we know that we still have a long way to go. And that's where these foundation agents come into play. Let's take it one access at a time. Earlier this year, I led the Voyager project, which is an agent that scales up massively on a number of skills. And there's no game better than Minecraft for the infinite creative things it supports. And here's a fun fact for all of you. Minecraft has 140 million active players. And Minecraft is so insanely popular because it's open-ended. It does not have a fixed storyline for you to follow, and you can do whatever your heart desires in the game. Think about how difficult this is for an AI agent to understand. First of all, if you drop an AI agent into the game of Minecraft, it doesn't understand that you can craft things. It doesn't understand the rules. It's an open-ended game, so you really have no storyline to follow. You have no set path that you need to take in order to achieve victory. And that's different from all the other AI simulations we've had with games in the past. There's always a very clear reward at the end. There's a very clear path to victory. Even if you're playing Super Mario Brothers with an AI agent, there's only one direction you can go. As the game scrolls, it prevents you from going back to where you came from. And when we set Voyager free in Minecraft, we see that it's able to play the game for hours on end without any human intervention. The video here shows snippets from a single episode of Voyager, where it just keeps going. It can explore the terrains, mine all kinds of materials, fight monsters, craft hundreds of recipes, and unlock an ever-expanding tree of skills. So what's the magic? The core insight is coding as action. First, we convert the 3D world into a textual representation using a Minecraft JavaScript API made by the enthusiastic community. Voyager invokes GPT-4 to write code snippets in JavaScript that become executable skills in the game. Yet, just like human engineers, Voyager makes mistakes. It isn't always able to get a program correct on the first try, so we add a self-reflection mechanism for it to improve. There are three sources of feedback for the self-reflection, the JavaScript code execution error, the agent state, like health and hunger, and a world state, like terrains and enemies nearby. So Voyager takes an action, observes the consequences of its action on the world and on itself, reflects on how it can possibly do better, some new action plans, and rinse and repeat. This is exactly how humans learn, right? We travel through the world in our bodies, we experience things, we have consequences for the actions that we take, and then we slowly learn. Now, this is jump-started by our parents, hopefully instilling some decent values and helping us navigate the world around us when we're young, but it's largely the same thing happening in these machines, which is pretty incredible. The self-reflection piece is particularly interesting to me. And once the skill becomes mature, Voyager saves it to a skill library as a persistent memory. You can think of the skill library as a code repository written entirely by a language model. That's the crazy part. This actually has memory now. So even though it has to learn everything sort of from scratch by just trial and error, doing, finding the consequences, having self-reflection, it's able to actually, as it gets better at these things, save those skills. And again, this is the same thing humans do. We figure something out and then we sort of file that away in our memory. And hopefully we don't make the same mistake twice or we get better over time. It sort of compounds. So you can imagine these AI agents running through the world, if they're able to do this at a speed of say 10X, 100X, a million X, what a human can, they can conceivably get really highly skilled at virtually anything very quickly and remember those skills forever. Not only that, they could actually share those skills instantaneously with an entire fleet of robots. 
or AI agents. And in this way, Voyager is able to bootstrap its own capabilities recursively as it explores and experiments in Minecraft. So let's work through an example together. Voyager finds itself hungry and needs to get food as soon as possible. It senses four entities nearby, a cat, a villager, a pig, and some wheat seeds. Voyager starts an inner monologue. Do I uh, kill the cat or villager for food? Horrible idea. How about the wheat seed? I can grow a farm out of the seeds, but that's gonna take a long time. So sorry, piggy, you are the chosen one. And Voyager. I mean, who wouldn't pick the pig? They're delicious. It finds a piece of iron in its inventory, so it recalls an old skill from the library to craft an iron sword and starts to learn a new skill called hunt pig. And now we also know that, unfortunately, Voyager isn't vegetarian. One question still remains. How does Voyager keep exploring indefinitely? We only give it a high-level directive. That is to obtain as many unique items as possible. And Voyager... Okay, so it does have a high level directive. It does have this directive of obtain as many unique individual items as possible. And I think if you think about it, humans also, we have a directive. Arguably it's, you know, self-preservation and continuing on the human existence. So it's essentially reproductive success is the human goal. Now we have some other things that obviously we've built up as a society, but you have to have some sort of goal, even for these AI agents, in order for them to have something to strive for, have something to achieve in the end. To implement a curriculum to find progressively harder and more novel challenges to solve all by itself. And putting all these together, Voyager is able to not only master, but also discover new skills along the way. And we did not pre-program any of this. It's all Voyager's idea. And this, what you see here, is what we call lifelong learning, where an agent is forever curious and forever pursuing new adventures. Compared to AlphaGo, Voyager scales up massively on the number of things it can do, but still controls only one body in Minecraft. So the question is, can we have an algorithm that works across many different bodies? Enters Metamorph. It is an initiative I co-developed at Stanford. We created a foundation model that can control not just one, but thousands of robots with very different arm and leg configurations. Metamorph is able to handle extremely varied kinematic characteristics from different robot bodies. And this is the intuition of how we create a Metamorph. First, we design a special vocabulary to describe the body parts so that every robot body is basically a sentence written in the language of this vocabulary. And then we just apply a transformer to it, much like ChatGPT. But instead of writing out text, Metamorph writes out motor controls. We show that Metamorph is able to control thousands of robots to go upstairs, cross difficult terrains, and avoid obstacles. Extrapolating into the future, if we can greatly expand this robot vocabulary, I inv Check at the bottom left, this robot here. This is the one that's actually gonna be showcased in the rest of the video, but the ability to control itself like this, to stand up on those the wheels, everything else, it's a really unique design. I haven't seen anything like this in sort of bipedal or quadrupedal robots before, and it's fascinating. Also, the idea that essentially what they've done is they've trained a large language model to output motor controls or controls for the individual actuators on these robots and these machines instead of outputting you know, tokens as words like we normally would. Vision Metamorph 2.0 we'll be able to generalize to robot hands, humanoids, dogs, drones, and even beyond. Compared to Voyager, Metamorph takes a big stride towards multi-body control. And now... That's an important piece right there. He just said that it's going to be able to control not just you know, that sort of quadrupedal with the wheels uh, robot that they showcase there, but it'll be able to go across different disciplines. So it'll be able to control a drone or a humanoid robot, hands, It'll be able to manipulate individual fingers, that sort of thing. If you can actually crack that and you can build a language model that can control any sort of device or implementation that interacts with the real world, that's one of the big missing pieces in robotics. Let's take everything one level further and transfer the skills and embodiments across realities. Enters Isaac Sim, NVIDIA's simulation effort. The biggest strength of Isaac Sim is to accelerate physics simulation to a thousand X faster than real time. For example, this character here learns some impressive martial arts by going through 10 years of intense training 
in only three days of simulation time. 10 years of intense training in three days of simulation time. This reminds me of the Matrix, right? Where Neo goes in and then a few minutes later he comes out and he goes, I know Kung Fu. That's amazing. If you can go in and you can understand and learn a new skill that would take an entire lifetime in a matter of days, weeks, months, that's powerful. And think about this, with the unlimited compute power, not unlimited, but the massive compute power of a company like NVIDIA, they're able to accelerate this, but also do this in parallel. You can do this across a thousand disciplines, a million different disciplines, whatever, at the same time. So you could conceivably have these machines learning almost every single aspect of every conceivable thing they would encounter in the real world simultaneously and in a very short period of time. Something that would take humans years or lifetimes. Time. So it's very much like the virtual sparring dojo in the movie Matrix. There you go. And this car racing scene is where simulation has crossed the uncanny valley. Thanks to hardware accelerated ray tracing, we're able to render extremely complex scenes with breathtaking levels of details. And this photorealism you see here will help us train computer vision models that will become the eyes of every AI agent. Computer vision is such a necessity. And think about how this works. If a robot walks into a room, it has to instantaneously understand everything that's going on in that room. It needs to know this is a computer, this is a desk, this is a window. When you look out a window, you can see a city or see the outside. It needs to understand all of that context in order to be able to interact with the objects within that room and in order for it to navigate that room. That's something that's been completely missing. And my theory is that large language models will largely fill in the gaps there. We've already seen with GPT-4 and multimodal LLMs that you can supply an image and it can tell you about the image, not only, you know, for example, that a guy is holding a set of balloons, but what would happen if you cut the strings on those balloons? Just from looking at an image, it's able to infer these are probably helium filled balloons. They'd probably fly off into the air. The man might fall. He could get hurt because depending on how physics and how high he's off the ground and everything else. That has all been missing up until this point. So comparing these vast simulations, these computer models, and also the level of detail that NVIDIA is able to create with these simulations with large language models, this is exactly the technology that's going to usher in the era of robots, actual intelligent machines. And what's more, Isaac Sim can procedurally generate worlds with infinite variations so that no two look the same. So here's an interesting idea. If an agent is able to master 10,000 simulations, then it may very well just generalize to a real physical world, which is simply the 10,000 and first reality. As we progress through this map, we will eventually get to the upper right corner, which is a single agent that generalizes across all three axes, and that is the foundation agent. I believe training foundation agent will be very similar to ChatGPT, all language tasks can be expressed as texting and text out, be it writing poetry, translating English to Spanish, or coding Python, it's all the same. And ChatGPT simply scales this up massively across lots and lots of data. It's the same principle. The foundation agent takes as input an embodiment prompt and a task prompt and output actions. And we train it by simply scaling it up massively across lots and lots of realities. I believe in a future where everything that moves will eventually be autonomous. And one day, we will realize that all the AI agents across WALL-E, Star Wars, Ready Player One, no matter if they are in the physical or virtual spaces, will all just be different prompts to the same foundation agent. And that, my friends, will be the next grand challenge in our quest for AI. Wow, that's powerful. I think we're in for a massive change. And, you know, this showcases that NVIDIA isn't just building compute. They aren't just the chipset manufacturer that I think everybody sort of gives them credit for. They're actually pushing the envelope of robotics and machine learning. This ability for us to generalize the way that robots interact with these different realities, the ability to train it across thousands of different realities in a very short period of time, and then generalize that to the real world, that's going to usher in the era of robots, intelligent machines. If you would have asked me just a couple years ago, even last year, I would have said that jobs in the trades, things like an auto mechanic, a plumber, a technician, those were safe 
careers. I felt like as soon as ChatGPT came out, you can sort of see the writing on the wall for computer programmers, for managerial positions, even marketing people. I still felt like real world physical labor jobs were pretty safe. I no longer feel that way. I felt like as soon as multimodality became a thing with large language models, the writing was sort of on the wall for, okay, if you can understand the context of an image and you can apply that to everything else that a large language model understands about the context of the world, you can start to see a picture of building a machine that's intelligent enough to navigate and understand the world and take some of those jobs as well. Now, I, I don't want to just talk about the prospects of taking jobs or losing jobs to AI and robotics and, and things like that, because I think that misses some of the point here. And that's the point is just that the world is going to look vastly different in the next couple years. We're going to have machines in our daily lives helping us in ways that we couldn't have even imagined just a few years ago. The world will perhaps be more productive and prosperous than at any point in human history. And I think that's something really interesting to look forward to. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always, I'm Brian Lovett. And remember, all your tech are belong to us. I'm the virtual prophet in the tech town. Breaking down AI, wearing the crown. From basics to complex, never let